Okay, so before we do our mid chapter six point for chapter six or unit six, then we're going to do one final lesson of introducing how we deal with metric system and customary or standard unit measurements. So this is in your end success book. So if you did not follow the directions, look at the board this morning, grab your end success book this morning and bring it into class. Stop the video now and go get it because you need to take your notes. So this is often looked at as the most confusing lesson probably in all of the first semester. And it's really not if we just get past, I've never done this before. It's so confusing to, I've never done this before. However, I know this process so I can do it. That's all it takes. This process is going to be key. So when I look at going to the metrics to customary, and vice versa, from customary to metric. I'm just going to follow the same process that we've done for the last three lessons. This is the fourth. We look at our metric system. Here are the conversions that they've given you in the book. I'm going to add that to the original document on Canvas. So if you haven't saved that document on Canvas with all of the conversions, uh, I would go in and save it now. If you have saved it, you want to resave it because I've added this one to it. Metric system, we've talked about King Hector. The thing about this lesson is I can no longer use that. I must use this. It's the only one that's going to work because when half of it is the customary or the standard units of measurement, King Hector doesn't do me any good at all. All right, so as long as I can go through these things, I know what I have. I put it over one. That gives me my first rate. I'm going to multiply it by a second rate. That second rate numerator is what I'm going to. And I'm always going to put it over the conversion. And once again, when I say conversion, what that does is that puts the same label that I have up here down here so I can cross it out. Then I'm either going to multiply or divide depending on what my setup is. So let's look at what we're starting with. The General Sherman tree in the Sequoia National Park is the largest known living tree in the world. It stands 279.4 feet high. About how many meters is that? Well, I can tell you that I don't have those conversions memorized in any way, shape, or form because my brain has too much in it. I don't need to add all that extra information, but I can look that up at any time. I can do a Google search. I can pull out my phone and look it up. Um, it's pretty easy to find the information. You now have it on a Word document saved to your OneDrive math folder, and you can have it forever and ever and ever as long as OneDrive exists. So I'm going to follow my setup each and every time. I'm going to look at what I have. I have 279.4 feet. I'm going to put it over one. That's my first rate. I'm going to multiply some other rate. Well, then I have to go to that chart. I know I'm going from feet to meters. So when I look up here, this gives me meters and feet, feet to meters. That's the one that I want to use. So I'm going to put what I'm going to is meters. So that's one. So I'm going to put a numerator of one meter. And that is the same as 3.28 feet. So that is going to be my conversion. That's going to go on the bottom. And what that allows is for that label in the top and bottom to be cross-reduced. That's the most important thing of being able to set these up correctly. If I cannot cross-reduce my labels from the first rate to the second rate, I have it set up backwards. And normally it's the second one that you have it reciprocal. You just kind of flip their position. But once I do that, then I multiply fractions across, and that's going to give me... 279.4 times 1 meters, so just meters, and 1 times 3.28 with no label, so I'm going to have a setup of 279 and 4 tenths meters divided by 3.28. Division, right? Because fractions are always division, and which one always goes inside the division box? I know I repeat myself multiple times throughout all my videos and lessons, but it's because some of you still haven't gotten those steps into your head, and I want you to be a confident and successful math student before you leave my class at the end of the year. So 
everyone wants to be able to come in. That top number goes inside my division box no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's bigger, smaller, or anything else. It's always the top. The numerator goes inside. That is my dividend inside. My denominator, my bottom number, is always my divisor on the outside. Then I go through. Hmm. Can I divide decimals? We did that in, I don't know, what was it? Lesson three, maybe lesson two. Can't divide by decimal, can I? So I gotta go over, over, up. And O, O, U, over, over, up means I go over on the outside and put the whole number. That has to be moved twice. And then that's how many times I have to move it on the inside. And I move it once, and I move it twice, and I run out of digits. So I have to fill it with zeros. And then I raise that decimal up. Well, that's gonna give me a really weird number. And if you start just dividing that out by hand, it's gonna take you a long time. That's why we get our handy dandy calculator. We type it in. I've got the math problem set up. I divide it, and this is what I get 85.1829268. And I'm not going to figure out what that number is because I don't care. Because when I look at the directions, um, it says about, about how many meters. So we're going to round all of these to the nearest tenth. Okay, right? so the nearest tenth, think about your position. If you don't know decimal positions, if you don't know whole number positions, once again, it's in your math packet that I gave you the first week of school, and you can constantly get that out and look at it. So you remember that the tenth is the first decimal position. Okay. So when I underline, because we're going to be rounding, my tenth position, that's a one, then I have to look at my indicator, and the indicator is always to the right, no matter what, when I'm rounding. Then I have to remember what I say. So, I'm going to put this up here, right? You can pause this as many times as you need to as I go through it, but I'm only going to put this up once. We have to learn how to round, and some of you still aren't doing it correctly. This is going to be key for the rest of the year. It's also going to be very important in junior high and high school. We have to be able to round and round correctly. And I know that I teach it differently than most people do, but I'm going to show you why it's because I had a parent email me about two weeks ago asking me why I'm so picky about that. So when I'm rounding, I look at the place value, and I underline it. I, I always look to the right, that's my indicator. And what I say is, my indicator that I've circled, if it is 0 to 4, and that includes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's what 0 to 4 means. It's not a ratio. It's saying all of those numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that tells me to stay the same. And that's where I'm different and I'm very picky about that, and I'll show you why in just a second. My second one is, well, if it's not, and it's actually 5 to 9, so that's 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, then it tells me to round up. Usually that's the half that most people get and they're successful with. Okay. 0 to 4 stays the same. 5 to 9 rounds up. My parent emailed me, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, before Thanksgiving break, and asked, they weren't questioning me or telling me I was wrong. They just wanted to know why I was so picky about it. Because when we were kids, I'm a little older than that person. And so when we were kids, we were taught to round down or round up. The reason being is when people say round down, they seem to mess it up. And it's about 85% of the time when I see students come to me saying, well, we round down. We don't round down. Because what they do is they say, well, if I'm rounding to the hundreds and I've got 2,134, then I underline my one, and my indicator is my three. Zero through four says to round down. So they change that one to a zero, they keep the two, and they end up with 2,000. And my friends, that is not correct. That is why I never say round down. Because I don't want you to change your underlying number. I don't want you to change your hundreds position or whatever position you're rounding it has to either stay the same or go up. We never change it to going down. So if I stick with the idea that zero through four stays the same, that tells me what to do with the place value I'm looking at. I know I'm going to be rounded to the hundreds, it's a one. My indicator is indeed the three. But I say zero through four tells me to stay the same. I know the one stays the same. Everything in front of it stays the same. I end up with 21 in front, then everything behind it becomes a zero. That is why we circle the indicator, in this case the three, to 
you know, that reminds me from the three on back to the decimal, they become zero because the spherical decimal is next to zero. So I know I went into detail on that, but I wanted you to understand, but I need you to get it, have it in your mind, commit it to your to your life, because you're going to use this in life. If I go back to this number, I have 85.1, 829, All I care about is the second decimal position, which is the hundreds. It is my indicator. It's an eight. Five through nine tells me to round up. So the one becomes a two. Everything in front of it stays the same. I keep my decimal. I keep my five. I keep my eight. Everything behind it would become zeros, except it's not a whole number, is it? It's a decimal. And we've said this week and for the past couple months, I don't have zeros at the end of my decimal number. So all of those zeros I drop off and get rid of. So I end up with 85.2 or 85 and two tenths meters high. The other ones will go much bigger. All right, so on this one then, we're going to say find the number of quarts and liters. I don't know how to do that, but I know the process. I don't know what the conversion is, but I've got the chart. I'm going to follow my process. I'm going to follow the chart. And all of this, I'm going to ignore. So I'm whiting it out. So you have space over here that you can write what I am, or you can get a blank piece of paper and take notes. You don't need to follow the steps there because we're going to stick with what we know because we're successful with what we know. What do I have? I have two liters. I'm going to put two liters over one. That's my first rate. I know I'm multiplying. What am I multiplying by? I'm multiplying what I'm going to. I'm going from two liters of quarts. So I'm going to put quarts, but I got to look over here on my chart. Quarts and liters. That's the top one, right? So one quart equals 95 hundredths of a liter. So one quart is what I'm going to. My conversion allows me to cancel my labels. I know the 0.95 liters has to go on the bottom. I get rid of my liters. I multiply across on fractions. I end up with 2 times 1 quart, which is 2 quarts, and 1 times 0.95, which is 0.95 or 9,500. That we know is going to be division because fractions are division. The top numbers go inside the box. I end up with 2 quarts. I have a decimal out there, so I went in and added a decimal inside with the two. 95 is my denominator. It's going to go on the outside. I have to do my O, O, U, over, over, up. Move it two times on the outside to make it a whole number. I have to move the decimal on the inside to make it a whole number. Caution yourself. Don't get in a hurry because what I usually have is when I'm doing an O, O, U and there's a whole number inside, people automatically put the decimal in front of the whole number. Not the way it goes, right? Because that changes the value. I have to keep the decimal behind the whole number and then move it two times. Since there aren't any digits there, I add my zeros, and then once well, again, you're going to get a wonky number. So don't try doing that by hand. It's going to go out several positions. Get your handy dandy calculator, type in 200 divided by 95 equals, and it's going to give you two point. 1052-6316. No, you don't need to have that on your paper. I'm just showing you what you would end up with if I did step by step by step by step on my division. It would take you a while. What I care about is in this lesson, I'm going to be finding courts about, right? Because all these little wavy lines have a specific meaning. So we're going to round to the tenth place on this assignment, unless it tells me different. So I look at my number and I underline my tenth position, which is the one. My indicator is always to the right, which is a zero. Zero through four tells me to stay the same. My one stays the same. Everything in front of it stays the same. Everything behind it would become zeros if it wasn't a decimal, so they drop off. So I just end up with two and one tenths quarts. Same process every time, for all week long, right? We have the same process, we should be good to go. All right, so let's look at A and B then. 
I'm going from three pounds, wavy lines, X kilograms. I have no idea what that means. So let me explain it to you. The X just simply means that's a missing number. That's called algebra. We get into that after Christmas break. It's much easier than it appears to be because you're not used to working with numbers, but I promise it is. Just imagine that was a blank line, right, that we have been seeing. Imagine it looked like, uh, you know, blank, uh, so blank lines, right? We're just trying to figure out what it goes to in kilograms. When I know what that means, then I also need to know what these wavy lines mean. So what these wavy lines mean is it almost equal to, right? It's not quite. So that is usually going to indicate that we're going to be doing rounding. So when they have these, you know, that one meter is equal to 3.28, if I actually did the true conversion, I would see that this has a really wonky decimal number, and what they've done is they've rounded it to 3.28. It's not actually equal to 3.28, it's almost equal to 3.28. Okay, so don't let those little wonky equal signs confuse you. We're just going to do the math. What do I have? I have three pounds, they've written it for me. I'm gonna put it over one, always and forever, that's my first rate. I'm gonna multiply it by my second rate, my second rate denominator is always going to be what I'm going to, what am I going to? I'm going to kilograms. I gotta to go to my conversions chart and find the comparison between pounds and kilograms. Hmm, there's two of them, isn't there? So, I, this is where I get to choose mathematically what I wanna do, because if I end up with a 2.2 on the bottom that I know I'm going to have to divide by a decimal. But if I use the top one, and I have the 0. 0.454 on the top, then all I have to do is multiply. I prefer to multiply than divide, so I'm going to use that top one. You can use either one. Either one will get you the same, the same answer. It's just going to look differently in your step. I'm going to choose that one, so I'm going to put, since I'm going to kilograms, the 454 thousandths on top over one pound. That allows me to convert or cancel out my pounds, and I just have multiplication now. I don't have to divide. So now I'm going to take my 454 thousandths, make sure I have that decimal written in there, times three. When I multiply those out, I get an answer of 1,362. But that's not my answer, because I multiplied by a decimal. Right? If I count my decimal spaces, once again, not my decimal points, I count my decimal spaces, how many spaces behind decimal points are in my math problem? Well, I only have one decimal point in my math problem, but I have three spaces behind it. So I have to go at the end of my answer and move it three times from right to left. That gives me 1.362, rounding to my nearest tenth once again. So my three is in my tenth position, my six, my hundredth position, the number to the right is always the indicator. Five through nine tells me two, round up. Three becomes four, everything behind it is going to drop off because it's a decimal. If it was a whole number, then I would have 1,400, right? But since it's a decimal, I just drop those off and leave it as one and four tenths kilograms. Going over here. Once again, now I have these wonky N. Just imagine it's a blank line because that N is just simply saying that it's a missing number. Once again, these wavy lines are just meaning that the answer is going to be almost equal to. So don't let those things confuse you. Just do the work that we know. So I put a white box over what they set me up with. What do I have? I have four miles. I'm going to put that over one, always and forever. That's my original rate. I'm going to multiply it by, and then I look at, I'm going from miles to kilometers, kilometers to miles, my customary miles, right? So I got one mile equal to kilometers there. So I'm going to my kilometers. So that's my 1.6. That's where I get that number. And then over one mile. So that allows me to convert or get rid of my labels. I cross-reduce my labels. I'm left with multiplying. I'm going to multiply across. I don't care.
care about my denominator anymore because it's just going to be one and I can drop it off. So 1.6 times 4, when I multiply those out, I get 64, but I have one decimal position, right? One decimal space, but I have to move from right to left one time. That gives me 6.4. I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, and that is the nearest tenth. So my answer is 6 and 4 tenths kilometers. All right, just a couple more. We're going to do the math every single time. What do I have? I have 14 kilograms. I put it over one, I multiply it. What am I going to? I'm going to pound. So when I look at these, once again, I got two different ones. I could choose the top one, but that's going to make me divide by a three-point decimal. I don't enjoy doing that. I don't like doing all the over, over, up, and worrying about if I have my decimal in the right position. I want to multiply. So I'm going to choose the second one, which will put the decimal number on top, and then I can multiply. I can do either one. My math will look different, but as long as I do the correct math, I'm going to get the same answer. So I'm going to multiply by 2.2 pounds, because that's what I'm going to, which is equal to one kilogram. So that goes on the bottom. I cross reduce my labels and then I can multiply across 2.2 times 14. Once again, I can do 14 times 2.2 is going to give me the same answer. Right? I end up with 308. I have one decimal position. I move my decimal from right to left one time. That's already in my nearest tenth. So my answer is just simply 30 and 8 tenths of a pound. Number five, going from ounces to grams, I start with what I have. 300 ounces is going to go over one. I'm multiplying. What am I multiplying by? I'm going to grams. I've got to find ounces to grams. And when I find it, it says one ounce is almost equal to 28.35 grams. Well, I'm going to grams. So my 28.35 needs to go on top. My one ounce goes on bottom. That lets me cross reduce my labels. I don't worry about my denominator anymore because it's just going to give me one. It won't change my answer. I multiply my numerator. So I'm going to take 28.35 and multiply it by 300. When I do that, I get a rather large number, don't I? 850,500. But I have to remember I just multiplied a decimal number, and there are two decimal positions in my math problem. So I have to move my decimal from right to left two times. So my answer is actually 8,505. And don't worry about rounding to the nearest tenths because it's not a decimal number. So I'm good to go on that. I would like you to pause the video and do number six and come back and check your work and see how you do on these. So hopefully you did what I asked. You pause the video, you worked it out, and now you're going to check with me. So you looked at what you have. You have 55 inches, you put it over one, following the same steps, multiply it by what you're going to. I looked at your my chart and I found out I'm going from inches to centimeters, centimeters to inches. So this is my conversion rate. So my next rate that I put down, I'm going to the centimeters, so I put down 2.54 centimeters. I know that's equal to one inch, about equal to one inch. So I put it over one inch, which would allow you to cancel out your labels. Once you did that, you multiply 2.54 times 55, and you got 13970. And then you said, that's not my answer, because I've got two decimal positions, and i got to move from right to left two times. And so you ended up with 139.70, and then you said, hmm, I can either round to my nearest tenth, or I know I don't end a decimal number with a zero, I just cross it off, and then it's in my nearest tenth position. So I have 139.7 or 137 tenths centimeters. Don't make this lesson difficult. The key to this lesson is following these steps. We've done it four times, and I'm willing to help you until you realize how to look at this image and set it up. Once again, this is on Canvas. Your conversions are on Canvas, and I'm here to help you. Do your best, and I'll collect your assignment the next day of school.